Okay, just a few uh, heap odds and ends to clean up today. Um, short presentation. So the first thing to mention is, you know, the book doesn't mention building a heap by iterated insertion. I went over it because I've just seen lots of students build a heap this way. They say, oh, I have a bunch of values. I want to have a heap. Let me insert them until I have a heap. Um, the book's presentation sort of doesn't talk about insertion until after build heap is done. So if you actually go through the book's presentation and learn it in the order they present, maybe you won't be tempted to do that. But I've just seen it happen too many times, right? The book says, oh, we're going to learn this max heapify. And now we go through, we do max heapify. We can build a heap using that. Um, but anyway, what happens if you build by iterated insertion? How bad is that? Uh, if I just give you numbers in a random order and I ask you to build by iterated insertion, how long does that actually take? So my claim is uh, it doesn't actually take order n log n time. That's the worst case time. But I think you'd expect it to take order n time. To get an intuition of why that's true, let's think about this. Imagine that you have some heap, and I want to insert a value into that heap, right? In this case, if I'm inserting the, you know, I'm given the values in a random order, and I want to insert a new ninth value here, right? I want to insert some new ninth value. Um, I want it to hang off of my heap here. What's the probability that that value that I insert is going to go all the way up to the top? Well, it's only one in nine, because the only probability, the only way it would go all the way up to the root of the tree is if it's the biggest number I've seen so far. And if it's the ninth number I've seen, that should only happen a ninth of the time. Now, something like half of the values in the heap are leaves. So half of the values are leaves. Probably half of the values sort of don't go up at all, right? You'd expect that to happen half of the time. And the things that are parents of leaves are already sort of much bigger than or, or sort of, you'd expect them to be bigger than average. So I would sort of expect, well, the odds that something goes up and becomes a new, you know, root, that's one over n. The odds that something goes up and becomes a new root child, it's maybe a little bit bigger than n over 2. Because, well, something like half of your nodes are here. There's n over 2 of them. And you have to be the biggest of those n over 2. Now, uh, the very, very biggest of the two halves combined has been pulled out to be the root. But basically, the node that's the left child of the root, you still expect to be one of the biggest nodes in the tree, right? And the second biggest node in the heap is, is one of these two children of the root. So to displace it, you have to be a big number, right? So without proof, without reference, that I actually haven't seen it anywhere. I'm just going to say, you know, I kind of expect for randomly ordered data um, for it to take linear time just to build a heap, even if you use the sort of iterated insertion, which is discouraged. Not only that, but if you're, you know, for many uses of a heap, um, like if you're going to have a bunch of deletions, the deletions really do tend to take logarithmic time. So even if you use this sort of slow n log n build heap, and even if you hit the worst case n log n time, that might not uh, increase your actual asymptotic runtime. So what I'm saying is, at least in this case, for a heap, even if you use sort of this suboptimal worst case n log n runtime, it might not really make your runtime that much worse. And even if it does make the build heap runtime worse, you're usually using the heap to do something other than build it. You're using the heap, and in the course of the heap operation, a lot of times you're going to be using n log n time anyway. On the other hand, if you simulate both of these by hand, you know the linear one is easier. And coding the linear one, once you have the build heap operation code, it doesn't take it is is easy to code anyway. So why not actually use the linear time one? Well, no reason. You should use the linear time one. It's better, but just not that much better. Next up, so heaps are often used for priority queues. Um, the book talks about sort of a, uh, a 
max priority queue where the highest priority gets the highest number. A lot of times in implementation, people actually say the lowest number is the highest priority. Um, so the book tends to talk about this in terms of max. But of course, even though I've only talked about max heap, you can exactly turn this into a min heap by just saying, hey, okay, a node has to have a value no larger than each of its children instead of no smaller, right? No problems there. Max versus min heap, no problem. Using um, heaps as priority queues seems very natural. We have our insert. We have our delete max or delete root, whatever the root is. If you're using a min heap, that's fine. Um, and extract max or extract highest priority, whether you're using a low priority. Either way, you're talking about the root. Those are all sort of standard operations. On the other hand, we have some of these sort of non-standard operations. What happens if someone comes in and says, hey, I want to change the priority of something that I have. Or somebody wants to delete something which doesn't happen to be at the index. So I say these are non-standard. Why? Because in order to do those things, you need to have the index of the node, right? These pretty much crush the black box abstraction of a heap. Like, I have this nice black box heap. It's being implemented by, say, implicitly by an array where each node, each thing in the heap has an index. And all of a sudden, somebody comes and says, hey, heap, delete whatever is at index number three index number, you're not supposed to know about my indices, right? It's fine for me to internally use these indices to delete something or change a key, but for you to know about my indices means the black box of the heap abstraction has pretty much been, been destroyed. So if I say I have a bunch of jobs and I want to be able to increase the priority of a job, a job has to know its index within a heap. And of course, some job some job uh, object, why would it know anything about a heap? It, it just knows it's a job, right? So this crushes your, your black box abstraction, but you don't want to say, oh, I want to change the priority of some job. Let me in linear time go through everything in the heap until I finally find the job whose priority I want to change. And that takes linear, and wow, that's bad, right? I mean, we could build a whole heap in linear time inserting into a heap or deleting from a heap those are or changing the key of a heap those are supposed to be logarithmic time operations and if we have to search through in linear time to find the thing whose key we're changing or linear time to find the thing that we're deleting well deleting it quickly if it took you linear time to find doesn't help so we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to break our black box abstraction you you do what you got to do to make things efficient in this case we kind of break our heap abstraction that's too bad. All right. That's it. Thank you.